Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video guys, we're going to talk about how you can travel a beautiful, beautiful Cancun on a super duper tight budget. So in this video guys, I'm going to give you the straight numbers. I have lots of pictures, lots of videos to show you guys exactly how much I paid and how to do it on a tight budget. So if you're new here, my name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start budget traveling the world. I talk all about short-term traveling and long-term traveling. I love to travel for a month. That's my thing. So make sure you hit the subscription button if you would like to learn more. So our goal for this trip was basically to eat a lot of tacos, drink a lot of tequila, lay on the beach and enjoy downtown city life, downtown Cancun. That's our, that was our goal for this trip. It's pretty simple. And guys, I got to do exactly that. It was so much fun. And our grand total for the trip for each of us, we both paid $630 each. And that literally includes every single thing from the moment we stepped onto Mexico to the moment we got on the plane and left. That included everything from our flight, our accommodation, to our COVID test to get back to the US. Um, all foods, all drinks, all activities, all taxis, every single thing you can imagine. So guys, I'm really, really excited to get into this video because I did say we spent $630 each, but I feel like this trip could have been $500 each. It could have been even cheaper because there was a few mistakes that I made because I just didn't know until I got to Cancun that I'm going to share with you in this video so that you can save even more money and have an amazing, amazing time. So I know you came to this video because you want to know the numbers. You want to know exactly how much money you need to save, how much you should expect to pay in Cancun. So let's jump right into it. Like I said, I spent $630 each. Let me break down the different costs for the different expenses on this trip. So my round trip flight was $157 both ways. The Airbnb was $311 for all five days and we split it in half. So that was about $156 each. For our food and drinks all together, we spent about $350 each. Again, that could have been less. And if we split it in half, that was about $175 each. For all taxis, including um, our ride from the airport to the Airbnb and the Airbnb back to the airport and then traveling around Cancun, we spent $120. For all activities, we spent $53 each. Oh, and by the way, the taxis uh, was $120 for the both of us, so it was $60 each. Sorry, forgot to mention that. And for our COVID test, we spent $33 each. Okay, so that was my budget. And like I said, it's a total of $630 each. I think I rounded it or something. But again, watch the watch the end of the video. You can spend way less than that. All right, so let's jump right in. Like I said, I paid $157 round trip for my flight to Cancun from Orlando. I won't get too into this because I made an entire video on how to get cheap flights to anywhere in the world from anywhere. I don't care if you're in middle America going to like some other small town in uh, somewhere in the world, it doesn't matter. You can get a cheap flight, so check out that video above and below. Anyway, let me just tell you quickly how I got my cheap flight to Cancun. First of all, I use skyscanner.com, my favorite website to find cheap flights. I entered in Cancun, I entered the month, which was March, and I looked for the cheapest dates. I let Skyscanner tell me when to travel. And I highly recommend that you do that. If you have a full-time job, all you have to do is book your tickets three months before and just tell your boss, hey, I'm going traveling this time. Just let Skyscanner tell you the cheapest time to travel. And of course, go off season. Try not to go to Cancun in the summertime. If you do want to have that summer vibe, go in May. But try to skip July, June and July, actually even August too. Try to skip the summer months. Because first of all, there's going to be a ton of tourists there and everything is just going to be expensive and overpriced. And also make sure you skip the spring break season. Actually, let me stress that spring break is the worst time for you to go to Cancun. Now, to keep that base fare of $157, do not book a seat. You don't need to book a seat. Just sit wherever the um, airline assigns you. And if you're booking with two people, they are gonna put you guys together, so don't worry about that. The next thing is do not pay for a carry-on and do not pay for a, a check, check-in bag. You totally do not need it. What you have to do is be super smart with how you pack your personal bag. You guys know I have a personal bag that I love to travel with. I traveled all over Europe with it. 
But I decided, hmm, let me try something different. So I decided to buy this super like inexpensive uh, personal bag that's meant for budget airlines like Spirit and Frontier. It's called Nari personal bag. I think that's what, how it's pronounced. But it's the exact dimensions that you can have for Spirit Airlines and Frontier Airlines. I decided to try it out. Why not? Because I can also fold it really tight and use it as an extra bag when I'm traveling um, long term and say I need an extra bag. So in my personal bag, I was able to carry five dresses, two pairs of pajamas, three sandals, all my underwear, all my bras, all my makeup, all my hair supplies. I'm definitely missing some stuff. That's like the bulk of it that I just mentioned. Oh, and my laptop, my um, chargers, uh, even my tripod here. I was able to carry a ton of stuff in that personal bag. So I'm gonna show you the link, um, the page for Amazon here. And you can get this in two different styles. You can get it in um, one with the strap, but I decided not to get the strap because I don't. I never wear my bags like that. Or you can get it with the um, the short strap that comes with it. I'm not explaining that right. But anyway, I'll show it on the screen. And there's a ton of colors. There's a crap ton of colors. You pick what you like. I got the baby blue one. And another thing I forgot to mention is that I have packing cubes that I use to um, organize my stuff. I think this is the secret here to really getting a lot of items into your um, personal bag. You need to pack it really, really tight and just organize your things. So I had packing cubes, I had my laptop um, case and a, a case for my charger, all my chargers. And then I had a few pouches to organize my toiletries. So that's the key to really getting a ton of stuff in your personal bag i'll link all that below so guys those are the ways that you can save money on your flight and just pay the base fare and not all that extra stuff that these airlines try to make you purchase next thing guys let's talk about accommodations where to stay in cancun now if you watch any video on this channel you guys probably know i love staying at airbnbs I just feel like my money goes way further and it's just more comfortable for me and it's just more room. I don't really like staying in one room when I'm traveling, especially if I'm with my sister and her kids. That would drive me crazy. So I booked an Airbnb for $311. Was it $311 or $312? I can't remember. But it's one of those two. I'll show you how it looks here. So booking an Airbnb was my choice based on the cost and based on what I like in accommodations. So basically your cost of accommodations will depend on where you're staying in Cancun. I chose to stay downtown Cancun because I wanted the best of both worlds. I wanted to experience downtown city life and I still wanted to have access to the beach. You have your choice to stay in downtown Cancun or you can stay in the hotel zone which is what which is where the majority of people stay when they're in Cancun. However, the hotel zone is crazy crazy expensive. And I feel like it's so, um, how do I say that? It's so like, it's a world of its own. It's just for tourists. So it's just kind of one experience of Cancun. And I did not want to have that experience when I'm in Cancun. Like I said, I wanted the best of both worlds. But if that's what you want to do, that's totally up to you. But I just want to let you know that it will be more expensive in the hotel zone. So if you're on a budget, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you stay downtown Cancun. The Airbnbs, the hotels, everything, all three major accommodations, Airbnbs, hotels, and hostels are a steal. Like the deals are insane. So my place that I stayed at had AC, it had wireless internet, it had a parking spot, um, a kitchen with all the appliances, fridge, um, stove. And my Airbnb also even had access to the gym. We could have went to the gym for free. And on top of that, there's security cameras. And so I just felt very, very safe in my Airbnb. But most of all, I felt very safe in the neighborhood. I really, really loved the neighborhood. There's a ton of restaurants, awesome restaurants, um, supermarkets, uh, um, convenience stores, banks. Everything I needed was walking distance from that Airbnb. So I'm not trying to sell you on that particular Airbnb or Airbnbs in general. I'm just letting you know that you can get a killer deal if you stay downtown at an Airbnb. As for the hotels in downtown, I just felt like the prices were similar to the Airbnb, maybe like $30 more. And I just didn't see the point in spending $30 more when I can just get spend less at an Airbnb and get 
all of this. Like it was just a waste of money to me. And as for hostels, my sister wanted to have a hostel experience because she never got to do that in her 20s and she really wanted to try it. So I was like, hey, let's try it. Let's stay at a hostel. But the thing is that the hostel, two beds at a hostel was like the same price as a one night in Airbnb. So I was like, why rent um, two, bed, two beds at a hostel and share a room with like four other people when we could just get an entire Airbnb? So with all that said, just do your research and pick the one that's best for you based on your needs and based on your budget. But again, I highly recommend just staying downtown. You can get cheap taxis to the beaches, to anywhere. And just a quick tip, it doesn't matter where, um, what type of accommodation you're booking, just try to book somewhere that offers um, beach supplies so that you don't have to buy it in Mexico or bring it to the US. So for example, our Airbnb had beach chairs, it had a beach umbrella, it had beach towels. So we didn't have to worry about buying it or packing any of that stuff in our personal bag and that should be on the listing. If you need help booking an Airbnb, make sure you check out my video, how to book your first Airbnb. I'll link that above and below. All right, next guys, let's talk about food. As you can imagine, this was probably number two on the list after the beach of uh, the things I wanted to do in Cancun. I wanted to eat lots and lots of tacos and that's exactly what I did. I ate so many tacos. I discovered so many new tacos that I have to try here in the US. It was just a great time. So like I said, we spent a total of like $350 on food for the both of us and that's $175 each and that's food and drinks. And let me tell you, this, our food budget would have probably been at least, at least $50 less if we knew that in Mexico, the portions are out of control. You can totally share like a plate of food in Mexico. I don't even care where you go. All the portions were just like so large and we would learn that the hard way. We would order like three different tacos on the menu and the thing is the tacos would come with like a ton of meat and the taco shells and then there would be a side of like chips and guacamole and this and that so it's just this like big table full of food and we just did not know especially our first meal in cancun we end up spending 63 dollars for that meal the restaurant was a bit um overpriced because it's like a popular restaurant for tourists but we ordered a lot of food we did so that's just a tip for you just order as you go order one meal. If you're not full, if you wanna try something else, then order another meal. Don't order like three meals and intend to share it with whoever you're going with. Now I'm gonna get into the cost, exact cost in a minute, but I just wanna let you know, I ate all of my meals in downtown Cancun. I did not eat a single meal in the hotel zone. So let's get into the exact cost. Some of these, um prices or costs I might say together because again me and my sister my sister was sharing meals so yeah let's get into it so we ate at mid-range restaurants and street food we did not eat at any like um fancy schmancy restaurants it was all like basic restaurants and street food our meals which would typically typically include at least two drinks each an entree two entrees a starter and probably a dessert at, that's the bare minimum we would pay between seven dollars and 63 dollars which was that um restaurant i spoke to you about earlier an average meal right in the middle i found most of our meals would co would cost like 33 to like 35 dollars all together that's me and her meals together and again that was a crap ton of food we had to bring back food from the restaurants because i felt so bad like leaving it there i didn't want to waste it so on the $7 end, that's for the street food. And the street food, the tacos would be like 25 pesos, which is like $1.20. And then we would get like a dessert of churros. And we have got this whole delicious bag of like warm, fresh churros for 50 pesos. And what's that, like um $2? So that was like our street food meal. And also we would get a drink. And I honestly do not remember how, how much the drink was. I think it was like, my sister got a bottle of the um rice water and that was probably like 25 pesos or a dollar too so we we ate like a full meal for like seven dollars i found that the tacos range from like 25 to 90 pesos the street food tacos would be like 25 pesos while the restaurant tacos might be like um on the higher higher end 90 pesos all right so let's talk about drinking in cancun 
So the range I found was that some places charge literally a dollar or 21 pesos for a drink, while other places it was like 45 pesos or 90 pesos for drinks. We were paying around like 45, between 45 and 60 pesos for a margarita. The prices were all different based on where we went, but I paid between 21 pesos for a drink, 45, 65, and then some places would do a deal where it's 90 pesos for two drinks. And if you like getting shots of tequila, expect to pay between 20 pesos and 80 pesos for a shot of tequila. 20 pesos is like the cheap tequila and 80 pesos is like the top shelf tequila. So guys, as you can tell from these numbers, you can eat fabulously, fabulously in Cancun. Now, if you're on an even tighter budget and you wanna like cook some meals, there's supermarkets everywhere and there's this convenience store with just about everything you would need. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's O-X-X-O. And it's just like 7-Eleven. It has just about everything you would need from toilet paper, sodas and waters, and just the little bits and bobs you would need at your Airbnb. So they're everywhere. They're literally, they're around every corner. You can find this um, convenience store. But one thing I do wanna let you know, it does not have an ATM. They do not have ATMs at this, um, convenience store so guys next let's talk about activities so i just spent 53 dollars on activities in cancun i did want to do some kind of guided tour and i chose to do a taco tour i highly recommend that you book a tour in cancun just to just to learn something new just have a real well-rounded trip i wanted to learn something on my next trip to cancun i'm gonna do like the mayan um sites but on this trip, it was all about food and having fun in downtown Cancun. So I booked this taco tour and I it was the, I didn't have a good time at all. It was really, really, really overpriced. Um, it's actually funny. A lot of the places that I that they the tour guide took us on the taco tour, we me and my sister, we discovered it on our own. Like we did not need to take this taco tour. So it was kind of a waste of money because uh, the tour guide taught us nothing. It, it was it was a mess. I won't get into that, but just be careful with what um, tour you book because some of the tour guides are just in it for the money. You can use my favorite sites, Viator, Get Your Guide, and TripAdvisor to look for tours. Book something that you're interested in. As I said, I was interested in the tacos, so I booked a taco tour. But if you don't want to book any tours, you want to save your money, I do not blame you. There's just so many free fun things to already do in Cancun. I'll link an article in the description of the free things you could do in Cancun. Simply people watching and enjoying the street art. That was just fun by itself. The beach is free. But my favorite, favorite thing that we did in downtown Cancun was visit the Parque de la Palablas. I hope I said that right. I'll Put it here somewhere parque de las palabras <laughs> again it'll be somewhere here but it's basically an outdoor event for families i think it's thursdays to sundays and it's basically in an open space there's a ton a ton of street food vendors and there's rides for kids there's games there's like artists selling their works there's even an area for um little kids to ride in those like little cars um the parents can rent the cars for the kids there's like a big open space for the kids to play there it's super family friendly and it was just so much fun for my kids you can even like they're playing some music you can even dance you can sit down and you can eat there's tables it was just so much fun for me and i highly highly recommend that when you're in cancun you visit this area especially if you're bringing kids and by the way because of the area it was in everything was like crazy cheap that's where i got my 25 peso tacos and 50 peso churros and right near that park there's a ton of bars that you can Go ahead and have a drink after you're finished. That's what we did. Now let's talk about transportation and getting around Cancun when you're there. You can of course rent a car, you can take taxis like what we did, or you can take the local bus, which is the cheapest method. If you're in Cancun like us for a few days and you're on a budget, I don't recommend that you rent a car. I, re I recommend that you just take Ubers. Ubers are crazy, crazy, crazy cheap. We did have an expense of $120 for all our taxis, but that was because um, we requested a car from our Airbnb 
and that our Airbnb charges the tour the tourist rate of forty three dollars, which is like crazy expensive because to get from our Airbnb back to the airport we literally paid eleven dollars and another expensive taxi ride it was from the hotel zone to our airbnb downtown and that was because we picked the taxi off the street right near the beach with a bunch of tourists so the guy totally totally overcharged us he charged us 19 dollars if, if you get a taxi on the street, they're giving you their rate, which is going to be the overpriced rate. So the taxis, uh, like we were going everywhere, it's like $3, $4, $5. Uh, um, I was just like, eh, why walk? Let's just, take, let's just take a taxi. Okay, so the next thing you have to think about when budgeting for Cancun is your COVID test back to the United States. To get into the United States, you need to take a, a COVID test that's between a 24-hour period before arriving to the US. Now in Cancun, there's a ton, a ton of COVID sites, especially in the hotel zones. They're like literally on every block, like they're everywhere. You can get your COVID test, so don't worry. It's gonna be easy for you to find somewhere to get your test. And they're pretty cheap. I was seeing between 300 to 700 pesos. We actually paid 700 pesos. I know, totally overpriced. Just go get it off the street. The reason why it was overpriced because, was because the lady that was doing our test, she came to our Airbnb, did, did the test at our Airbnb. It was just convenient to us. I was just like, eh, let them come here and do it. And we got our test results within, I think it was like three hours after we took the test. And what we did to be on the safe side, we went to an office depot near our Airbnb and printed out a, a hard copy of our results. And I think we paid two pesos per copy and then seven pesos to use the computer all right so the last thing you have to think about is the atm fees guys do not make this mistake and i totally made this mistake because i was at the atm literally 2 30 in the morning tired as ever and i made a mistake and the mistake is converting your converting the money that you're taking out or converting the money when you're paying your bill at a restaurant to us dollars you do not need to convert your money. I don't understand why that's an option. I have no idea why. But when you're paying for something or when you're withdrawing money, do not convert it to US dollars. Just withdraw in pesos. If you know you want to withdraw 200 US dollars, go to the XE app, type in $200 and see how much pesos that is. And that's what you're going to hit on the ATM. I was charged literally $28 to convert my money into US dollars. I don't fully understand it, but it has something to do with the exchange rate. I'm not even gonna get into that. Just don't convert your money to US dollars. Do everything in pesos. So guys, I really, really hope this video helped. Cancun was an awesome budget, budget destination and I'm definitely, definitely planning on going back to Cancun before this year is over. So please do leave in the comments if you have any questions about Cancun or any videos you want me to make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.